Hey, welcome to CEO Check-In. I'm excited to be with you guys today and I have a guest coming on, Jean Ginsberg. Jean Ginsberg is a digital marketing expert and she's going to be talking to us about some of the do's and don'ts of digital marketing. Now that all marketing is digital, hey Jean, so happy to have you with us. We're gonna uh, let folks arrive and then I'll be pulling you on in a few minutes. I'm just gonna give my little go big tip. I always like to give a go big tip on these CEO check-ins. I know some of you are watching this later on today or over the next few days in IGTV. I also post all of these CEO check-ins on my YouTube channel if you ever wanna go back and learn from some of our amazing guests. We've had people who are experts in LinkedIn, in Facebook ads, in raising money, in branding. I'm trying to bring you the best of the best so that you can keep your sales ramped up in this last part of 2020. I know that we're all in a very different fall than we imagined we would be in. Hi, Bianca. Hi, Rabia and um, you know, trying to make it all work. We thought we were in some kind of a sprint, but it turns out we're in this marathon of figuring out how to live with COVID. I know that for me now that it's back to school, I really thought my kids were gonna be back to school, but it turns out back to school is just in their rooms at the moment. Um, you know, here in New York, they delayed the opening of the public schools. My other son's school is trying to do one week on, one week off, but it hasn't started yet, so. You know, we're all dealing with whatever challenges we're facing. My heart goes out to everyone with young children trying to, you know, school their kids at home while being back to work. That's gotta be really tough. At least my kids are older and independent. And if you're watching, even if you don't have kids, of course you're facing challenges of not knowing what's happening with your business, not knowing when the economy is gonna pick back up, worrying about friends and family and parents and still not quite knowing, you know, can we go see people? Do we have to you know, keep everyone out of our homes or can we have people in our homes with a mask? You know, We just celebrated the Jewish New Year and had a friend to dinner and there was a whole debate about that. So these are not normal times by any stretch of the imagination and that's why we need to support each other more than ever. Uh, we've decided at Million Dollar Women to put on a free live webinar that's going to be next Wednesday, September 30th at 5 p.m. It's called Do What Works and it's about how to end 2020 strong. And the do what works refers to the fact that there are many women in our community who are really making a lot of sales and doing very, very well. So I've gathered some of those success stories and going to be sharing with them, sharing those with you in this live webinar. It's a great chance to reconnect with women in our community, to learn about what's working in other women's businesses. I always think that's the best quick thing to do is see what someone else is doing and if it applies to your business, implement that um, and make sure that you can make the most of 2020 and these last few months. So we're gonna get some great tips here today. I'm super excited to bring on Jean. First, just wanna share a quick go big tip for today, which is to curate your copy. And what I mean by that is we all write copy for our businesses, whether it's in our newsletter, in our ads that are on social media, or perhaps on our website, right? There's copy that you had to think about. Well, I want you to go further than just writing it. I want you to curate it. And what I mean by that is think about if you had an art collection and you were curating it, right? You would have certain themes, you would have certain painters you worked with, you would be looking at who are the top artists in a certain category. I want you to look at your ad copy with that same level of precision and creativity and intentionality because this is really what is attracting your clients to you right now. And I'm sure Jean will have something to say about this in her digital marketing tips, but you have to make sure that you're speaking to where your client is at now. So if you curate your copy, and it might even mean outsourcing it, maybe you're gonna hire a copywriter, or maybe work with someone on your team who is less inside the jar than you are, right? When you're running your own company, it's sometimes hard to see what's special about us, what pain points are we addressing? But getting that right is critical to pulling in your next 10, 20, 100 clients. And that is what we want for you, clients and customers. All right, Jean, let's bring you on. And I'm so excited for everyone to get a chance from you. Welcome, Jean Ginsburg. All right, let's give the internet a minute to kick in here. Here we go. Hey, super excited to be here. 
Yeah, great to have you with us. Thanks so much. How's your week going so far? I'm pretty good. Busy. I'm actually traveling tomorrow. Um, this Are is, you? I think the third time I'm traveling on an airplane since COVID. So kind of oh, new. Where, where are you going? <laughs> Anywhere fun? Um, I'm going back to Chicago. Um, it's my dad's 80th birthday yesterday. So we're having a little party for him in Chicago. Oh, nice. I'm, I'm from Chicago. So uh, I, um, I live in Denver, but, but grew up in Chicago and went to high school and college there and all that jazz. So going back there to visit family. So Aww. it's um, Well, happy it's birthday to your dad. I'm sure he'll oh, be so well, thank happy you. to have you with him. You know, yeah, so many families uh, haven't seen each other in months and months. Yeah, for a while it was like that. Uh, I, I didn't see my family. So th I think Thanksgiving was the last time I saw them and then I went to see them again in July. So it was like something like eight, six, seven, eight months or something like that. So yeah, it's been, I, I know you were talking about this earlier, um, about, you know, kids going back to school or not going back to school and all of the different, you know, all of the things that are changing. It's, um, it's been pretty crazy. Well, I, and I you're helping it. women and men, but mainly women, with one of the key aspects that everyone's facing right now, which is, you know, all marketing has suddenly become digital marketing right? It's like, there's yeah. no more face to face, there's no more, you know, doing any other kind of marketing. And I think everyone's had to up their game in a way that they, you know, maybe thought about like, oh, I should do this at some point, I should get good at social media, at some point, I should figure out how to, you know, do sales funnels. Um, you know, and the, and the social media platforms are changing. I know you've done some live videos about um, Instagram's reels, right? How to make the most of that. So I would just be curious, what are you seeing as a couple of things that are making a big difference for people? If we can go right to the solutions, it'd be awesome. Sure, right? absolutely, yeah. I mean, I know great. we have about 25 minutes to chat, but yeah, let's go straight to the solution. What's working? I would say, yeah, digital absolutely is the key now before a lot of businesses can use more traditional marketing and you know it's still around but definitely digital is making its headway much more since covid started just because we're on our phone so much more we're on our computer so much more and so our audiences are now hanging out much more on social media online on websites on blogs and so this is the time to start a conversation with them is is right then and there so this is the change that of course and of course, you're seeing that too, like you said, and I'm seeing that is just digital is much more prevalent. And if you're not doing digital, then um, you're, you know, you really should consider your growth strategy for moving forward, because that could be detrimental to your business if you are not utilizing digital at this point. Yeah, and I think the women in our community are there. I think they're doing Good. it from what I've seen. But what I'm definitely hearing is, you know, I, I put things out there, I do all this social media, but it doesn't convert. I'm hearing that a lot. So is that something you've heard in your community too? And what are you, what are you doing around that? What are you advising? Absolutely, I mean, I think you know, if you throw spaghetti at a wall, it probably will stick or might not stick. So what you said earlier about um, curating copy, um, it has to be very strategic. I mean, you know, copy is of course one of those things, but everything that you do as part of your business has to be strategic. And, you know, I've had to learn that the hard way with my business, you know, I was doing that in the beginning with social media where I was just kind of throwing, you know, throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks. But now I have, I had to learn that I had to become a lot more strategic with <laughs> what I'm doing. That's a nice living room. <laughs> I know, whoops, press um, the wrong button. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Um, yes, I wasn't being, very strategic. <laughs> yes, well, you know, sometimes that happens. Please go on, online. this is helpful. Um, <laughs> Yes, being much more strategic with what you're what you're what you're doing, and really for me, and having I probably at this point I've spoken to over a thousand entrepreneurs in my career as as a business owner in the last seven years, and the one thing that I definitely would recommend is getting very clear on your ideal target market and on your branding and your messaging, and what you're trying to put out in the world. And once you get clear on those things, then using social media, using content marketing, your email, your website, it, it becomes a lot more clear because you start attracting the people that, that, that you want to work with your brand. And so that's, a, that's why I think a lot of times when we post or when entrepreneurs post stuff to social media or to you know, whatever their website, it's, and it doesn't convert, it's because they're not clear on their branding and their messaging, and they're not clear on who they're trying to target. 
And it has to be very, very specific, especially in the beginning. I always say niche down in the beginning when you're starting your business because you want to get a very clear message out to the very like small group of people that you want to work with. It's, you can always expand later. And I hear this pushback all the time where they're like, people entrepreneurs are like, no, I, I want to, you know, I want to do it for everyone. It's like, no, start small, start with a niche. And then once you're successful at niche, you can always expand. You can always make it bigger. You can always go, you know, Coca-Cola right, but you want style. those people to know, oh, this person's an expert in helping exactly. me. What would yeah. be one example from your community? Because I know you have a community of women, you know, learning about digital marketing with you. Can you think of one woman who came to you and was kind of being very broad and marketing to everyone and then niched down and, and what result did that have? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, there's a, um, a lot of, that happens pretty often where women come to our community and just uh, uh, clients I've worked with in the past or currently work with and who well, we, we made that change for them is that um, just an, as an example, one attorney client that I work with, um, she is an immigration attorney and she, you know, was pretty broad in what she was doing, you know, on the immigration side, but there's different, all kinds of, you know, actually kind of became an immigration attorney expert or <laughs> having worked with her. It's like, there's so many different types of cases. And now she focuses only on one case and she has been extremely successful over the last year or so, just because she started to narrow down to one very specific case, because then her whole team knows exactly how this case has worked and how you file it with, you know, the, the courts and everything. And then she, so she's trained her team. She's become a lot more streamlined. She also, her messaging is a lot more streamlined because it's only one case type. And so there's a really good example. And she, last month she made a million dollars in her law firm just, Amazing. That wow. change, yeah. I love that. Well, yeah, I know you help women, you know, with seven figure digital marketing and I help women get to a million. So whenever I hear women getting to a million doing anything, I'm excited. Good for her. How, yeah. What about the curating copy piece? Just since I brought that up earlier as the go big tip, how did her, some of her copy shift? Maybe that would be helpful for people watching to think about. And by the way, if you have a question, throw it in the questions here and I'll make sure to ask Jean, you know, your marketing questions. I'm sure people are wondering how this applies to them. So please. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I would love to answer any questions, of course. In terms of curating copy, yeah, I really liked how you you talked about that because it's so true. You know, you if you want to put together an exhibit of art, you don't just like slap some art together, right? You're actually curating the art ahead of time. You know, there's a strategy behind it, right? Like you want to do impressionists or you want to do, you know, Renaissance or whatever it might be, right? You're not just like going to take a you know, modern art and take you know, Renaissance art and take Impressionist art and put it, you know, jumble it all together. And so, yeah, same thing comes, goes with marketing and same thing, you know, more specifically goes to copywriting is that, again, if you, once you become very clear on what it is, who you're trying to serve, what your community, what the community you're trying to serve and what it is that you're actually offering them, what's the marketing message that you're putting it out there, then again, the copy becomes much easier because then you already just, you just pop that into your copy and it becomes curated it becomes strategic and not yeah so so let's go back to the lawyer then so okay so she mm -hmm. was trying to help all immigrants like all immigration law and then she realized okay i need to niche down and really serve people who just have this one type of problem how would that change her her marketing copy like in her social media for instance because it's really the message becomes really one message and i know that sounds i, I hear this a lot with entrepreneurs it sounds very weird to them but you really Think about it as you're actually saying pretty much the exact same thing, just in a different package. I know that it becomes um, a lot of times uh, difficult for entrepreneurs to wrap their head around it. They're like, well, why would I want to say the exact same thing over and over again? But if you actually hear the big people out there like Gary Vaynerchuk, Grant Cardone, I mean, all of those like, big names out in our, our space, if you think, if you actually listen to their presentations, they're very, very, very similar to each other. Not like, so like Gary Vaynerchuk does like a very, very similar speech all uh, day in and day out when he does his speeches. So he says pretty much the exact same thing. You know, he kind of, you know, repurposes it or like, you know, does it a little bit in a different package. But if you think about the content that he's putting out there, it's really the same thing in a different package. And so that's because exactly. he knows his target market, right? He knows exactly. what's going to resonate. Yeah. And it's not like he mixes up, you know, he talks about how he came from the Belarus 
how he didn't have any money. His family didn't have any money. He worked in a liquor store. I mean, it's the same right, message. He started the whole wine thing. I've seen yeah, it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, like, and it's literally every, like, but it resonates work. with, you know, a lot of people. And but it's the same thing. He He's, yeah. As the entrepreneur, he himself yeah. says the exact same thing pretty much over and over again. And that's what we have to think about. It, it sounds weird, but really when you get, when you hone in on your message and that's exactly what the attorney client did is that she just honed in on her and the message and we just, she kept repeating that message over and over in her copy, in her Facebook lives, in her many chat, in her, t when she's doing- So this is a great tip here. And let me just make sure people are getting this, that, that it's about coming up with some core language and some core pain points that you solve for your customers because exactly. you know so well who you're serving and then repeating that across many different platforms. And I hope at some point, Jean, you're gonna talk about sort of which platform do you think people should be using, right? Because LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok for however much that applies to us, you know, all these different options that, you know, can be very overwhelming for people. But I'd like to also ask you about branding and personal branding, because there's a whole piece here. We actually had some personal branding experts come on CEO check-in. I know a lot of women are confused about, well, how much should I talk about my own personal brand? How much should it be about the company? Do I keep those separate? And I know you've done some teaching on, you know, show your personality as an entrepreneur. So how do you weave that in? I'd be curious how you advise people. Yeah, I, I, that's a very good point. Um, I, I always think that weaving your personality is really what makes you stand out as an entrepreneur. That's why people like you is because you show your true self, you show your personality, you show what you're like, especially on video. And then that, that's kind of what draws people or, or repels people from you, right? That's because you're, you're showing yourself. And so I would highly recommend, um, and also it's, it's, it's like, it, it, when you when you don't show your personality, it can be uh, very kind of um, robotic in a way, um, especially on video. And so that's why it's important to show you who you are when, whether it's through your copy, through your videos, through whatever, all of your marketing material. So include some of that, but you can also very much control how much you're putting out there. So if you don't want to talk about your kids, don't talk about your kids. Like you don't, like, for example, you know, I go back to Gary Vaynerchuk just because I follow him very closely. But if you notice, he doesn't ever talk about his family or his kids on anything. He never has pictures of his house anywhere or videos of his house anywhere on his social media because he chooses not to discuss his family or his house or his you know, wife or his kids. I mean, he, he mentions them in passing sometime, but he never really talks about them directly. And that's his choice because he, you know, he feels that that's not really part of the conversation. Yeah, and, and he's showing his personality in different ways. I know he yeah, curses exactly. a lot, right? He's kind of a bro, like he's got that whole thing going. Yeah, and, and yeah. that's the thing. Like a lot of times I hear like, well, I don't want to show my person, you know, like I don't want to show my personal life. I don't want to show my kids. You don't have to. You don't have to show a picture, one picture of your kids if you don't want to do that. So it's very much what you choose, what you want to show. Now you should show your personality, but if you don't want to show your personal life, hey, you know, you don't, you never have to. So it just, it well, just and I would be curious because I mean, do. I have these discussions with my team, right? Where it's like, okay, do people really want to see like where I drink, drink my coffee? You know what I mean? Like it's hard sometimes to get your brain around the idea of showing things that, that really seem meaningless to you. So I would be curious, what are like three things people can do that like show their personality? What, what, what could they do? Absolutely. I mean, let's say traveling or vacations. That's a good one. I, okay. I, I do that quite a bit with mine. And, and the thing is, you'll see when people start to react to those things, like, Maybe they're interested in your coffee and you'll get a lot of engagement and people will be like, where is this coffee place and where can I find it? And does, do they ship, you know, everywhere in the United States? You might start seeing that, yeah, that you know, people love that kind of stuff. Or you might see crickets and so you're like, okay, maybe, maybe people are not interested in where I buy my coffee or where I drink my coffee. So a lot of it is just going to be testing and your audience. Some of them yeah, so, be okay, so travel, that would be one way. What, so, what are yeah, two other travel. things you could do to show your personality? Um, other things would be, um, I mean, it could be if you want to show your family that kind of also shows off your personality, show off, sh you know, talk about your, where you live, maybe talk about your neighborhood or your city that you live in, because that also shows your personality. So like, for example, I live in Denver and I do talk sometimes about, 
you know, skiing and hiking, because that's a big part of my life, um, and, go, and being outdoors. And so I love that, and I talk about that as part of my personality, because I moved to Denver for, for, you know, particularly a lot of times for that reason. So a few things, yeah, travel, where you live, because that kind of shows off, you know, your personality, you know, whether you live in Memphis, or you live in New York, or you live in Denver, or you live in LA, you know, you're, it's like a certain type of person that gets drawn to that kind of yes. place or city. So Great idea. Think, so so yeah. show off, you know, where you live, show off travel, you know, if you're going somewhere, talk about that. Those are things that help people get to know you. What would a third thing be? Um, a hobby. So maybe I see behind you, you have a lot of books. Maybe you love to read. So talk about the reading that you do. No, I, it's I just do... my set. I don't know what it is. <laughs> um, I, I read, I, okay, I don't read. I listen to audiobooks all the time. I listen to podcasts um, very often, like if I'm walking the dog or I have a long drive. Uh, I and I listen to audiobooks that are mostly related to entrepreneurship, business, um, you know, uh, personal development. I would say those would be the main, like the ones. I don't, do, I don't read any fiction books at all because I think there's so much to learn about, you know, things that are going on right now that I don't do any fiction. So that's an that's an example of my personality, right? Like I don't read any fiction books, and some people love fiction. So it just. And so would you do a post on that? You would do like a social media post yeah, talking absolutely. about the podcasts I, you love and that you don't really read yeah. fiction, and people can kind of get to know you better that way. Yeah, and 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 also like you can also make recommendations on books that you've read, right? Because like yes. for example, I read a lot of books on entrepreneurship, and I love them, and I think they would be super helpful to my community because they're also entrepreneurs, and I would love to share my experience about you know a certain book that I've read. Like right now, I'm reading the Blue Ocean Strategy or listening to. Sorry, I don't read. Oh yeah, that's listening. a great one. So yeah, I'm a huge I'm, reader. I was teasing, obviously, and I yeah. love that book. That's a, that's a really I good figured. classic. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so, so these are so these are great tips. I love this. This is very concrete. And um, you know, I'd be curious. Maybe share us a little bit um, about about your story about how you got to where you are. Since we're talking about going personal, I'm sure people would love to get to know you a little bit. Sure, uh, I can do a couple minutes. So I was born in the so former Soviet Union. Came here to the United States, to Chicago, when I was eight years old. Didn't know any English at all. So, and my parents didn't, you know, family didn't have any money. I mean, we came from the former USSR. There was, like, never any money there. Everything was called <laughs> communism. So, um, so it's very much been kind of a rags to riches story. That's so um, cool. So Russian was your first language. Yes, Russian was my first language. And, of course, you're someone who, who speaks a lot of languages. And we I talk love about languages, this. Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, too bad there was no little Pim at the time. We could have gotten up and running in English I know. Very, very quickly. But that's, that's also why you have no accent, right, as you learn before the age of 10. If you learn yes. a new language before the age of 10, you can have no accent. No one would ever know. English yes, you, I, and language. you are familiar with, like, the, I guess I call it the biological slash, like, sociological um, ways of learning languages, right? So when do you have an accent, and when and when do you and when do you develop an accent? If you know, so typically after ten or twelve is when you develop an accent. For the most part, you know, it depends. Maybe you work on it really hard, and so you, you don't develop an accent. But yeah, but under ten, typically, you know, I guess the mind is a sponge for kids, and they're just very very oh, totally, quick on yes. learning languages. Did you and, learn and your when languages? When you were a kid, did you imagine you would be an entrepreneur? Is this like the you always knew um, you'd take this path? No, I, as a kid, I, so and then that's the rest of the story is my parents, you know, being immigrants, very much stay in your lane, get a good job, get a good paycheck, you know, just do your, <laughs> do, you know, don't make company. any noise, especially as a woman coming from, you know, a very conservative uh, family that's also been part of it. It's like, you know, get married, have kids, get a nice job, just stay in your lane. And I was like, nope, I'm like, I was a totally rebellious, did not believe. Anything my parents said, to, not anything, but a lot of the things my parents said to me did not believe in the conservatism. And I was like, nope, I'm taking my own path. And I decided to become an entrepreneur about 10 years ago. I was still working for a few years. And then, and then seven years ago, seven and a half, um, I was like, you know what? I think it's time for me to go on my own. And that's when I started my business. So started, you know, with nothing. Didn't know anything about entrepreneurship, especially like back then, seven years ago, there wasn't that much online about entrepreneurship because it wasn't that big yet. Now you can find, you know, you can probably start a business and not even have to like read a book. You can just go online and figure out how to be an entrepreneur. But back then... And, yeah, you know, people you, didn't even always use the term entrepreneur, right? Exactly, when I started yeah. my first business, I was just like a business owner, you know? Right. So this is all newish. And, and, and then why marketing? Why was marketing like your go-to thing? Um, yeah, it's a good question. I did graphic design when I was in high school and in college. I, I was on my college newspaper. And so I've done a lot with graphic design and 
layout for newspapers back in the day like we you know this was all um done manually <laughs> before we had like software and everything so i really liked that and so i was like oh well what where can i apply that so i started looking into marketing and about yeah i guess about 15 years ago got a job in marketing right pretty much right after college got a job in marketing and then um just kind of you know worked my way through the ranks and then decided one day you know not one day but you know for for a while i was like i really want to start my own thing i really want to go on my own um one thing one thing that really bothered me about working in pretty much any company was like the inefficiencies of corporations um that drove me nuts and i my business is extremely efficient everything's documented we have a standard operating procedure like I, when i'm hire a new person they get trained type on a, everything type a sisters let's get a little fist bump oh my going. god yeah totally <laughs> yes. i don't I, I don't even think it's i don't know i don't think i'm type well, a necessarily no but but if you love the systems and all that yes. that's like a little piece of type a and yes, i do think that's definitely. often people's first sign that they need to be an entrepreneur is when they're always looking at how the company's doing it going why are they doing it that way yeah, this is and so I, stupid it was it was like it was just so frustrating for me because it's like I was like, there's so many inefficiencies and I would go to my boss or whatever, but they would be like, no, this is just how we do it. And that was the other piece that I freaking like couldn't stand. I was like, what, why are you doing it this way? There's no reason for it. There's better ways, more efficient ways. And I know like, oh, people watching right now are laughing because they've had so many of those same thoughts of like, I got to just either, either you have to leave and do your own company or you feel like you're just going to, you know, have to blow up the company you're in, right? Yeah, I, it was so... <laughs> well, I'm so glad you went and started your company because I know you've helped so many people with their digital marketing. And yes. you know, this is a tough time though, Jean, right? Like people really are scared about their business's futures, wondering why, you know, things they did before that were working, maybe they aren't working as well anymore. So, you know, thank you, first of all, for sharing your story. That was super cool and inspirational. And, um, but I do want to get us back to like, what should people be doing? right because you're the expert so you know how do they choose where to spend their marketing dollars can you just share a couple of like things that you're seeing maybe in your community as are working you know i have this webinar coming up next wednesday called do what works so what works according what's to your working? community yes what's from working? a very overarching perspective going back to your ideal target market really get very clear on that and get very clear on your messaging um that will work no matter where what you were like where the economy is or what's going on because you can always connect with your audiences if you can if you know their pain points if you know their challenges and you're very clear on it and how you can help them so that's a good that reminder was, and their pain points and challenges may have changed now right with covid they've exactly, got new yeah. pain points and challenges but what so, about yes, picking between you know linkedin and facebook and and instagram and um what else did we talk about TikTok? YouTube, right? You can advertise on YouTube. How are people making those choices in your community? Right. So that's actually a good question. And I get that question asked very often. And I know that this is going to, this is not going to be the answer that you're looking for. It always goes back to your ideal target market. So if you are a B2B company and you, you know, you're selling to businesses and that's your product or service, then LinkedIn probably would be your best bet. Um, if you're if you're selling to moms, you know you have a product, or you have maybe mom entrepreneurs or something like that, or a mastermind. Then Facebook is probably a good place for you, or Instagram. It really depends on where your audiences are hanging out. They are hanging out, you know, on a, on, on certain social media platforms. You know, if they're looking for more how-to, longer videos, YouTube is definitely a good place for that. You know, like how do you decorate a cake, right? Maybe you have like a cake decorating course on that and, and they probably are maybe looking on places like a YouTube because those are typically longer and the expectation going into YouTube is that I'm going to watch a longer video versus like yes. a Facebook or an Instagram, which are you know, 15 seconds or a minute or something like that. So, um, so, so that's good. So you have to, you know, look at your target audience, figure out which platform they're on. And then I'm sure you're also seeing people, you know, cross uh, purposing some of their content, right? Just like we're doing Absolutely. here, we're on Instagram TV, but this will also be on YouTube. You know, we can also cut a little piece of this and put it on LinkedIn. So yep. I think people are getting very creative now about how they can repurpose, you know, their content. Yep, that's a big one that I, you know, from a streamlining and automation perspective, uh, uh, repurposing content is a big uh, piece, is a big piece that I talk about, like a big message that I talk about because uh, so often entrepreneurs come to me and they're like, well, I don't have time to create content because I'm running my business. I'm like, yeah, true. But first of all, like now, because of where we are, especially with COVID, 
really creating content and posting to social media is the cost of doing business now. Before, maybe it wasn't, but now it really is just the cost. Right, like, it's, not, have, optional. That's yeah, not, it's optional not optional. Yeah, it's not optional. You have a brick and mortar place. You have, you do your accounting. Like, you have to do these things as part of your business. You have to do content. Um, so I do, I talk a lot about streamlining and automating and, and repurposing your content. So like taking this video, yeah, making small clips out of it, putting on different channels, Maybe you're making a podcast out of it, so downloading the audio and making a podcast, like a 30 minute podcast out of it, uh, making short clips, uh, making, taking quotes out of it, making it into a blog, right? So you can transcribe this audio and make it into a sure. blog post. Or hiring a VA and having them, you know, take some of the quotes and put it into Canva and make some exactly. images for social media. Yeah. Right. These Absolutely. are all awesome tips. And yeah. this is part of also what we're going to be sharing next week. And I hope you'll join us too for yeah. do, do what's working, right? So that yeah. we can see what are women doing? Because I know this can be overwhelming. If you're listening to this going like podcasts, blog, videos, like this is all a lot for me to do. And look, some people, right when COVID hit, they were like, okay, get out the ring light, get out the camera. Let me, you know, I can think of many women in our community who right away jumped on it and are reaping the rewards. Some of you are watching right now, you know who I'm talking about. And others are just getting to it now. So Help us understand, Jean, also the mindset piece of that. You know that uh, I just wrote a book on mindset. I know you're really into teaching mindset. I've seen from what you post. What's the mindset shift that, that people need to make around doing all this posting? Yeah, absolutely. The mindset is a big piece of it. I'm actually working on my second edition of my book now. I did a book three years ago working on the second edition. It's going to be released in the next month or so. Oh, and I awesome. Didn't have, yeah, What's it I called? Have... Can we get the name? Oh, it's, a, it's the same name as before. It's Win New Customers, um, and it's all about digital marketing. But uh, the point I was trying to make is that I, in my first edition, I did not actually have anything about mindset. But then in the last three years, I've learned that mindset is so important that I'm actually the first uh, chapter of the new edition is going to be all about mindset. And one thing that I would say about mindset is I hear this very often, especially with video, especially with women. You know, they're not very... A lot of times they have a lot of mindset blocks when it comes to like getting on video. Do I look good? Do you know, do I need lipstick? Do I need to do my hair? Like it, it's, uh, it's, you know, we have this kind of thing in our society where like women have to look good. You don't, you know, you don't have to look good. You can just go on camera and start talking about your message. So uh, I think we need to get yeah, you just need decent stuff. lighting, right? You need decent yeah. lighting and the technology has to be good. You can always add a filter later, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, with the, with the airbrushing and the way things are, you can always add a That's filter right. later. What's another um, mindset shift you're seeing people need to make right now? So there's the like, do I have to look perfect and amazing to make videos? That's number one. What else yeah. are people? I would say... And just Probably. getting and creating content. So that's another mindset block that I feel that I see very often. It's like, oh, you know, the excuse is always I don't have the time. But it's really, you know, you make the time if you want to be successful. So it's a mindset shift that needs to happen in order to think, hey, this is part of my business. This is part of what I do now. It's no longer like, oh, should I create content? It's like, how often should I create content? Absolutely. And yeah, we've another... been recommending people just put it on their calendar, right? It's like yeah. every, I mean, I do this every Wednesday now, and then I record right. some videos after. If it's on your calendar, you'll do it. But yep. you're right. Just thinking like, oh, I'm suddenly going to have time to do that doesn't usually work It's never going to, yeah, you're never going to have time to suddenly do it. It's just a matter of scheduling it out and saying, I'm committing to it, saying, yes, I will do it. This is part of my business. I need to create videos. I need to create content, whatever it might be. And then scheduling it out on your calendar, uh, for example, I so for I do uh, LinkedIn quite a bit because a, a lot of the businesses that I work with are also on LinkedIn, and I have a coach who helps me with that. He he's my LinkedIn coach, and he's like create these videos. Here's the schedule, you know, and we work together on making that happen so that I'm also accountable. And and he's been helping me a lot when it comes to making sure that I get my content on LinkedIn. See, I love that. And it's That's totally practicing what you preach, right? Yeah. Because if you don't prioritize something and if you don't know how to do it, then just get help doing it, right? That was yeah. one of my go big tips was find your flying buttresses, which right. basically means, you know, all those things that hold up Notre Dame, you know, the flying buttresses. Yes. Like if you need a coach to get started doing social media, then get a coach, right? If you need to join a community so you have other women, you know, encouraging you or you can see what they do but i think what gene and i are both saying right now is like this is not optional if you're already doing it great how can you curate your copy share more personal information like gene is saying you know show people your personality get really targeted about who your customer is and then i'm going to add to that if you don't mind like outsourcing and delegating parts of it because yes. it's a lot to do all on your own right i couldn't yeah. be going live like this if i didn't have my team i know you have a team 
Do you, do you teach a bit about that as well, outsourcing and delegating? Absolutely, yeah. A part of the whole standard operating procedures is, you know, especially when you are hiring new people or hiring a virtual assistant, so that you can train your virtual assistant or your team on how to actually execute on all of these campaigns or all of these you know, tasks that you're doing. So, uh, yes, I do talk. I mean, I talk quite a bit about delegating because that's another another mindset shift that I think entrepreneurs need to make. Also, you know, women entrepreneurs that you know, I was like that too. I was you know in control of everything. I wanted to hold on to everything, but then I realized I can never scale or grow my business if it's just me because it's not possible. There's only so many hours in the day, and so there's other people who could do a much better job of this than I can. And so it's much better to hire them and to give them these tasks than then for me to do that. And it also frees you up because now as the business owner, the business leader, you have time to work on more strategic things that are part of your business, growing your business, you know, whether that might be business development, you know, engaging with your audiences, yes. doing the content like you have now. Making more that. social media, right? Doing more exactly. content. And, you know, I, I'm, we're so aligned on this. And, and when you had me on your show, we talked all about why don't more women scale up their businesses. And you might remember that we talked about, right? This is one of right. the key things that most women get wrong in that they try to hold on so tight. And, you know, I did it too. I'm like you, I'm a, I'm a recovering perfectionist. I always, right. you know, say I'm not fully recovering recovered my team will tell you but <laughs> but I try right to always think about does this have to be me or can I outsource this and that's how I was able to grow my business to six figures and beyond and seven figures and beyond and I'm sure that's the same for you right we couldn't be yep. doing it all on our own we're, we're over time here but you've given so many amazing tips and thank you so much for joining us to share you know some things that we can be doing to up our digital marketing skills where can people find you Jean if they want to keep learning with you Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm actually offering, so I have a digital marketing group that I, that, that you can join. It's, um, I'm, so I'm doing a $1 trial for the first month and it's all about awesome. digital marketing, social media, and we talk all about these topics. So it's $1 for the first month. And if you like it, great. If you don't, I totally understand. You spent a dollar. And if you go to dmgroup.online, so that's the letter D, the, the letter M group. Like digital dot, marketing group. Yep, digital marketing okay. group dot online, DM group dot online. You can check it out. It's $1 trial. And we uh, we meet every month and we talk all about it. A regular price is 29 bucks. So even if you know you do beyond the $1 trial, it's only $29 a month. But if you want to you know, check that out, um, I would love to have you in the oh, group. Oh, what a great can, resource. Yeah, yep, thank you, you for sharing also, that. And please follow Jean. On yep, Instagram you can find me on social well, media. Well, that's right. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, you, sh you share a name with the dearly departed, but um, I don't think yeah. you're related, right? You and Ruth no, Peter no, Ginsburg? No, no, to Ruth Bader. But you got that fire. You got yeah. that fire yeah. and you're helping women. So I think that there's, there's some, there are some synergies there, even if it's not through blood. Um, yes. But listen, happy birthday to your dad. Have an Thank amazing you. safe trip to Chicago. Thanks so much Thank for making so the much. time. Thank you for and, having me. Uh, yes, it's my pleasure to be continued. Yes, absolutely. All right, Thanks Jean. so much. Have a great rest of the day. Thanks. You too. Bye. All right. There were so many good tips in there that you can just go work on right away. And so if you feel like you're already on a pretty good track with your digital marketing, like you're not overwhelmed by the things she was sharing, you're doing most of those, and you want to start learning about, okay, well, what's really converting and making people the big bucks, then please put on your calendar September 30th, 5 p.m., my live webinar do what works. We're advertising it here on Instagram, so you'll see it in my feed. And you can also just email maddie at juliapim.com. I'll throw that into the chat uh, because she is sending out the invites and we will send you an invite so that you can join us. Um, it was great talking about digital marketing today with Jean. I'm so grateful that she made the time. And listen, I hope that even though this is not the fall that we all expected, that you're still able to close new business create joy, have special times with your friends and family. I think right now we just really need to focus on the things that we have control over because there's so much we don't have control over. You know, we can help with the elections. We can spend time with loved ones. We can get better at speaking to our target customers. We can circle back to our customers and check in with them. We can do teachings so that people in our community can continue to learn from us. I love having you in our community, and I hope I will see you live with the other women who join us on the 30th for Do What Works. Have an awesome day, and I'll see you soon. Stay brave and go big.